So we're no strangers to talking about Jeff Grubb around these parts, specifically when it deals with things he says are coming to Nintendo Switch, be it games or systems or what, whatever. And today we have to talk about something that seemingly made rounds the last couple of days coming from an appearance that he had on Kind of Funny's show on their little podcast or daily show where he talked about the Nintendo Switch successor. And we need to make some clarifications and some understandings about what this is and maybe even have a smidge of a conversation about how we cover things both here on YouTube and in the world of traditional media. That being said, before we get into this video, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and if we hit 100,000 subscribers, by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we will be giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. That steelbook, the pins, the art book, the poster, it can all be yours for free. We just have to hit our milestones. So what are you waiting for? Why not subscribe to the channel? So what happened? So Jeff Grubb made an appearance on the Kind of Funny Games cast, I believe on Friday, and he said something that got the internet really talking and we need to have some context to it but before the context let's just get into exactly what he said here's the clip it's still on the table that we get something switch not not pro uh but it, maybe even not necessarily switch to uh maybe something like in between that is definitely like an actual upgrade in terms of hardware but in terms of the way that nintendo positions it it feels like they could try to do like to, to straddle the line a little bit and do like a super switch that continues the generation in a way that is more significant than they've done since the Game Boy Color, uh, but even more significant than that. And yeah. the, the big the thinking there clearly is they have Nintendo Switch Online. They have a lot of subscribers. They have a lot of people who are spending a lot of money buying video games, and they don't want to disrupt or, or lose any of that momentum because all the other companies have figured out how to maintain it. And they don't want to be the one company like restarting from zero. We all know that they've, they've said as much publicly in earnings reports that they don't want to restart that. The whole idea is to now build on that going forward. So you heard what he had to say there about getting a Switch 2 or Switch Pro or neither of those and something in between, which made people get really confused and wonder what the hell he's talking about. Really what he was meant is that whatever this system coming, he thinks that it's going to be in the same line of family of switches we have today it will be more powerful and it's going to be fully backwards compatible and cross compatible and sort of be like an iphone 14s situation or i, I don't even know if they don't do the s series of phones anymore but you, you kind of get what you're saying it's basically the switch pro without being the switch pro or it could be the switch 2 but be called the switch pro but not be called the switch pro it could be new switch super switch but here's the thing. What we need to remember is these were just his thoughts, his opinions. He never said that he heard this stuff from any of his sources. So is or are his opinions worth covering? I guess you could argue for conversation purposes. But when you have a number of news outlets going out there saying that it is uh, a thing that's going to happen, it's a little weird. Because he was just given his opinion that basically whatever is coming is going to be in the same family of systems and thus be fully cross-compatible. And whether or not it has the power of a Switch 2 or a Switch Pro or whatever they label it as is sort of irrelevant to his grander point of it's going to be them not abandoning the current audience while moving forward, which again is something we see PlayStation and iPhone and all the rest of these companies seemingly have figured out, just not Nintendo. So yeah, it is what it is. But that wasn't all he had to say. He also had to say something about that Pokemon rumor slash leak. Remember that originally got us all talking about Nintendo Switch 2. And here's what he said there. A, a, a patch for Pokemon to enhance it to go along with new Switch hardware. And there could be translation issues there. There's so many right. things and that it could a be. A lot of different, like, subtle meetings uh, that, that maybe they're working on it for DLC 2 because that's when this company is done working on this Pokemon game. And so they want it ready for whenever Nintendo hardware launches, right? There are a million reasons to read this, a million ways to read it in a way that it's like the timing might not mean anything. Everything else, everything else could be true but the timing might not be significant. And as you see, there's just an interpretation there that maybe the timing is significant, maybe the timing isn't significant, but it's fun to have that alternative perspective. But of course, what we need to we, we, we need to address, and I'm glad that Kind of Funny Games went there, the Zelda, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess rumor stuff. Yes, Jeff Grubb 
has addressed it yet again for maybe the first time in 2023 on anywhere but his own channels. I've always heard that it's, it's been done and it's sitting there. It's ready to go. Why they wouldn't put it out? Zero idea. No idea. It doesn't make any, like last year they didn't, they said they wanted to have a big Zelda release every year and last year they didn't have one, right? Because Skyward Sword came out in 2021. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's I, I would have just expected, again, based on circumstantial evidence at that point, that it would have made sense for last year. Now, when we had that big show where we said, uh, here's what's happening in the direct, and we said that was happening, that was a mistake in, when it came to Zelda. The Metroid stuff I always did hear for sure. There was miscommunication on the Zelda stuff. So if like going back to that, it's like, well, no, then I guess we don't necessarily know what's happening with, this, with, with these games anytime soon. But going back before that, like I said, I've always heard they're ready. They're sitting there. We're just waiting for Nintendo to pull the trigger. When they will, why they will, who knows? And so as you can see there... Jeff Grubb has not only uh, doubled down, tripled down, he's quadrupled down that these games are done. When they're coming out, he doesn't know, but they're done. The Wind Waker, Twilight Princess HD, they've been ported over. Now, we've seen evidence that Nintendo sits on things for a while. We've seen evidence that they've been maybe sitting down the Metroid Prime remaster since 2021. We've also seen that same sort of evidence for Fire Emblem Engage that maybe they sat on that since 2021 so we have some tangential proof out there that nintendo has been sitting on games and it's possible that the wind waker and twilight princess hg are games that they are sitting on and i do wonder if they're sitting on them intentionally because they plan to release them on the next hardware so it could look like an even an improvement over the wii u right like i think right now bringing them over to Switch, they would just pretty much be the exact same games except with the older style inventory system versus the dual screen system that they were using on Wii U. But besides that, I, I don't think that there would be any big fundamental differences. So I feel like they think there's a bigger selling point if they brought it over to see the new system where maybe it has 60 FPS and better resolution. And you can say, well, what about Skyward Sword? Well, Skyward Sword was never officially in HD, so that was a little bit of a different situation. And also, you know, Link's Awakening, they just ended up, you know, remaking the entire thing. So I do fundamentally think that Nintendo probably has these games done and they're probably just sitting on them. But the who, what, where, when, why is, is something that we'll just, we're not going to know about. So... Whether or not you like Jeff Grubb I, or not, I don't know. Some people really enjoy his banter and commentary, and some don't. But I did mention that I wanted to talk a little bit about how the coverage of this stuff happens. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm not guilty of things because, hey, we all make mistakes in how we cover stuff. And it's important to be able to fundamentally recognize those mistakes. One thing I think that uh, Jeff Grubb has come to realize over the last few years is that pretty much everything he says becomes a YouTube video. Everything he says gets reported as facts. And I don't know that a lot of these outlets, like uh, when this story broke about, oh, it's not a Switch 2 or it's not a Switch Pro, and I'm reading all these news articles, there was almost no context given on all these various news websites that he was just giving an opinion. He wasn't, you know, stating things from like direct knowledge or anything. And it's fine if you want to talk about other people's opinions. Certainly we did it in this video. But I, I want to clarify that I think sometimes we need to be more clear in our coverage of what's an opinion, what's a rumor, what's a leak. Uh, and right now, sometimes those lines get so blurred together, what happens is it leaves the onlooker, the viewer, you guys, or the reader, probably also you guys on these various websites, um, left with having to decipher things yourself. And while I think a lot of us are obviously well-learned and attention detailed enough to recognize you know, what's a source versus what's not a source, what is a rumor versus what's an opinion, what's an actual leak versus what is possibly a leak but unverifiable. I think a lot of us can sort that out, but I do think that there is also a massive contingent of people that don't. They, they don't see beyond the title. They don't see beyond the initial quotes and everything. They just see that stuff and take it at face value. And it's a dangerous way to uh, you know, to to consume things, and we can't control the way that people consume things. So what we have to do is control our reporting on how those things are handled. Uh, right now, it, it it would behoove me to say that I've made I've made some mistakes. 
Uh, in my last video, I, I talked about, well, how did, what did I title that is again? Something that upset some people. Uh, <laughs> something about story detail leaks, or the Tears of the Kingdom story details leak, or something like that. And yeah, you know, my source on that is Mike Odyssey. And I, I, I love the guy, and I, I haven't seen the leaks for myself firsthand to have that knowledge. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, that stuff turns out to be right. But also, it, it's a situation where I hadn't seen it for myself. And, you know, I called the guy and the guy, you know, said that the flyers were there. But then when I went to get one, suddenly he didn't have them. So, like, is he lying? I Look, I don't know. Okay, I'm not here to defend my reporting on that. I just need to do a little bit better in how I cover things. I think this also applies to things like talking about with Jeff Grubb or Nate the Hate or Emily Rogers or any other insider or potential insider or person who claims to be an insider says. I feel like I do a pretty good job most of the time, but sometimes I make mistakes. And I think a lot of these news outlets, they don't care whether they make mistakes. They just care about getting their clicks. Most of these news outlets don't get hundreds of comments, right? They don't have like a super active community they just have a lot of passerbys that come in for a few seconds and then they move on whereas us that have you know make these videos we have some very passionate people watching some people that hate us some people that love us because you're not here for a couple of seconds my average watch time is about 50 percent of every video so i mean you're getting three four five minutes of people's time whereas you know if say my nintendo news puts out a report and someone clicks on the link and checks it out they're probably only there for less than 30 seconds right so even if they don't like the report or they think it's full of crap, they're highly likely not going to make a comment on that because it requires more effort. It requires you to put more time into commenting on something than it took you to consume it. And I think that when people read these websites and they do these passerby headline surfing, it's easy to sort of just let it go because you know what? You didn't feel like it was wasted a big chunk of your time when you watch one of our videos. And it might feel like, well, you know what? I can't get that time back. I understand. Uh, and that's where some people come in where content creators don't respect your time. Um, I, I think that a lot of that has to do with just the, the platform and the form of content that this is. We're saying the same stuff these reports are saying, but because we mix in our opinions and our thoughts and we're talking about all this various stuff, it just kind of feels like we're wasting your time. Look, if you're still here watching this video at this point, I doubt that you feel like your time is wasted because you could have clicked off already, right? You already got the report. So I look at it more as, look, this is just another form of communication. This is a longer form of communication. It takes you longer to consume it. And because of that, there's going to be more criticism when you get to the end and you realize you didn't like that video. It's just part of the way it works. I just hope that all of us, including these websites, can improve on being better to clarify opinions versus rumors versus leaks and facts and all of that. And that includes me at this channel. I got to be better about it too. That being said, thank you so much for tuning in. And it is interesting to see Jeff Grubb at least double down on that uh, the Wind Waker Twilight Princess stuff. I know I'm, I'm a little bit uh, excited at least. I, sh I probably shouldn't be. But I'm a little excited to at least hear that that's still a thing and that he's not really backing off on their existence. Thank you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.